covertly implanting a USB rubber ducky into a USB mouse, this time on Hack 5. Hey everyone, Glitcher, and welcome back to Hack 5. Today we're looking at implanting a USB rubber ducky into a USB mouse. Now, why would you want to do this? Well, in a previous video, probably three or four years ago now, I implanted a USB key crock into a mechanical keyboard. And Cribbit, a good friend of Hack5, over on Twitter did something very similar using a USB mouse and a OMG cable. And the reason for that is much the same as the reason for why we'd be doing this. Uh, it is to have a covert implant that you could ship or deploy or otherwise put into a uh, physical pen testing environment. Whether that's at a, you know, a sanctioned pen test you're doing for a company and you're walking in and, you know, covertly swapping out a keyboard. Or whether, you, like I said, you ship it to the IT department and they deploy it for you. Now, what we're doing today is a little bit different than what we did with the key crock. The key crock didn't need any sort of USB hub because it would pass through the keyboard automatically. The USB rubber ducky doesn't do this. So we're going to have to look at installing a USB hub. Now, obviously, this is a little on the big side, so we're going to be looking at how you cut that down. So starting off, we're going to take apart our Logitech mouse. We're using a Logitech K210 set here. Uh, it comes with a keyboard or whatever. I find this really interesting how it's put together because it's made extremely cheaply. It's a single-sided board like you'd see from old Radio Shack kits, and it uses through-hole jumpers to keep the cost down. No vias, nothing like that. Really simple. Uh, same thing with the uh, USB hub we're using. Now it is a double-sided board, but that doesn't matter here. Uh, it's cheap and easy to hack. We don't even have to take out any screws. Just use a sharp implement to pry the case open, being careful not to stab yourself. And you can see that the USB hub chip is at one end of the board. And that means everything else is dumb. It's transparent. The USB hub has no idea that I'm about to cut off two of its ports. Uh, taking a sharp knife again, we're going to cut through the traces and just snap off the end of the board, making sure that the internal traces are not shorting out to each other in any way. After that, we're going to start heating up all the pads on the second USB port on the chain. And we can be a little destructive here. We're not looking to save this port, just the board. I don't have a desoldering station. I wanted to keep this simple, cheap, and use the tools that uh, you're likely to have. So I just pried up all the little pins, careful not to tear the traces away, ensuring there's enough heat there. I cleaned up the pads, and then we move on to removing the USB cable that the hub comes with. We're going to reuse the mouse cable, cut off the end with enough to reuse the connector, strip and tin all the wires, and then start uh, soldering them in place. Now, I noted when I removed the cable, the order of the wires. Your hub's likely going to be different. There's no standard for this. Now, the nice thing is there is a standard for the actual USB mail port removed. In this case, it's red, uh, white, green, then black. And I'm just going through making sure that the thin insulation isn't compromised here and adding some hot glue uh, so that we have some strain relief. So when we start fiddling around with the placement inside of the mouse, we're not going to break off any of those connections we just soldered. Now, I removed the metal shield of the ducky because it is only going to risk shorting stuff out, and it saves a little space inside the mouse, minimizes uh, rattles and stuff that would be suspicious for our covert, covert implant. Now, it's going to take some fiddling to get the placement just right, but once it is, you can plug your mouse in, making sure that you get, in this case, the ducky mass storage pops up because there's no inject.bin loaded, and the mouse works too. And that's how you do it. It's as simple as that. The beauty of this mod is we don't even have to remove the case of the USB rubber ducky, and that also means that we don't have to desolder the USB ports or anything, so it's still a perfectly usable ducky. Unlike when we did that key crock mod I talked about at the top, uh, we had to physically disassemble it, remove the USB header. Basically, it was now one with that keyboard. But this, you could pop the mouse open, remove the uh, USB rubber ducky, and still have both a functional mouse and a functional USB rubber ducky. In the next video, I'm going to be working with Darren on making a really cool payload so that we can use this mouse implant thing to its fullest extent. Uh, if you have any other ideas on devices you'd mod or ways you'd implement this implant, please let me know in the comments down below. Thank you all for watching. I've been Glitch. This has been Hack5. Glitch out. Thanks for supporting Hack5. Find all our shows, community, and pen test products at hack5.org. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about implanting a USB mouse. A USB... Implanting it? No, that's backwards.
be impressed if I could get it to fit. 